Welcome back to Permadef here, guys. The challenge where we have to go from level 1 to level 20 in one single life. If we die, we reset and we go back to the start. This challenge was completed once on Warlock before the update. But now that we have all of the spells, all of the perks, I wanted to try this again. So we're going to equip Torture Mastery, Blow of Corruption. For spells, we're going to bring Power of Sacrifice, Curse of Pain, Hellfire, Bolt of Darkness, and I guess we'll bring curse of weakness as well so let's get into it level 1 to 14 has the level 1 to 14 q so that will definitely help us with our leveling up experience because players will have no gear from trade channels they will uh potentially be newer to the game i feel like the level 1 to 14 levels are way more chill in dark and darker our strategy to achieve level 1 to 20 in one life is to kill the cave troll as much as possible every time you kill the cave troll you get 50 experience and so it is an incredible way to get your experience and uh actually now with the change so that you have the high roller goblin caves map in the pool there is way more experience on offer this map has such good mob density and mobs are the way that you get the majority of your experience in dark and darker pvp does not give you any experience and so whilst pvp is fun and it can be a good way to get new gear and test your skills it's not going to aid a permadeath challenge because you do not get experience for it. So let's get into this. We'll go kill the cave troll immediately. We have uh, blow corruption early so that we can deal with PvE and potential PvP threats. Blow corruption does a lot of damage. But later on, once we get a bit of movement speed, we'll probably switch out to phantomize once we've got our build starting to set up a little bit. And hopefully this will help any new warlocks with learning how to start off on warlocks. So for the cave troll at level one, go for a curse of pain, go for a power of sacrifice, set up the hellfire. We can't do that, so we'll cancel it and just make sure we dodge this attack, and then we can go for the Hellfire now. Perfect timing for that. Get in for a second. Wait for an overhead swing. No overhead swing, so we can throw. Make sure we back up. Then we go for a Power Sacrifice. No overhead swing. Curse of Pain. Set up the Hellfire. Waiting for an overhead swing. That's not the one I mean, but we will dodge it. That's the overhead swing that I'm talking about. That can crush you whilst you're casting. You do not want to cast when there's a threat of that coming out. It will crush you every time, especially with a staff. But when he's doing that little wide side swing combo, you can pretty much just step to the left and cast onto him once he does the attack. All right, good timing, very lucky. Really threatened ourselves there. Two Hellfires into every Power Sacrifice and Curse of Pain is pretty much the golden ratio if you want to keep your health as topped off as possible. But at level 1 without Vampirism or Magical Healing, it can be pretty tricky. We might go for a, uh, a Power Sacrifice Curse of Pain combo here just to try and top up some health again. And then we get this Hellfire prepped. Now, Curse of Weakness was brought into our build, but it's not really a, a spell I really use. I will try and switch that out for something else later on in the, 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 uh, the attempt. There he goes. Cool. So what? We finished. We've just done uh, over half our health. What are we going to get from him? We're going to get some Troll's Blood. We're going to get a Doublet. We're going to get a Longsword, which has really good weapon damage on it and physical damage. That is a really juicy Longsword. That is one of the best longswords you can get. 42 weapon damage, 4 weapon damage, 4 physical damage. That is incredible loot to start off our, our journey here. So definitely want to make good use of this and make sure we use that longsword to, to victory. And that's why you grind the cave troll. Anytime you've watched me do permadeath, the level 1 is the hardest start. But very often we get some crazy loot very early on in the challenge. And that gives us the greatest advantage early to try and utilize you know the the loot that we have it, it gives us such a, a good start every time and now with the new traders the leather smith and the hala we can get magical healing much easier so, so once we get up to full health here we'll head into the trolls cave room try and get some loose loot and then i suspect we'll just try and find the first portal and get out because it will be much more efficient for us to get some gold into our system and start kitting up our warlock i think this is going to be really uh really useful as well to to new warlocks for finding gear and understanding what gear is good at different stages and based on what your gear is how you can play 
your spells and change your spell setup. So hopefully we'll, we'll, we'll teach some people some things. Alrighty, let's loot this up. Let's pull out our torch so we have good vision. The blue torch buffs us to victory. I am a fan this update of running Falchion over Longsword because of the lantern changes, how they give extra stats. Being able to hold a lantern in your offhand with Falchion in your, your, your main hand and get as much uh, stats as possible is a really nice feeling. One of the rules of permadeath is that we cannot use the trade channels ever. So the only way that we can make gold or get items for ourselves is by selling to vendor and purchasing from vendor. So this longsword, whilst it is incredible and would definitely sell for a lot of money on the trade market, it is, uh, it's now ours. It can't be, uh, can't be sold on, you know? Let's pull that longsword out. Let's get our BOC ready. Looking for any potential naughty players trying to steal our troll loot. Nothing there. We reached level 20 on permadeath before. Yep, I've done it once on Warlock pre the update, but I was very excited to try it on this update with the changes to Warlock. I figured that it would be a lot better. We got lots of weapon damage on this, uh, this longsword. We need to kill some PVE, try and reach level three on our first go if we can. So we might as well kill these goblins down here. And I think this um, this game here is a great example of how uh, any character can get a really strong start in Dark and Darker by just utilizing the map's strongest areas to them. Let's go. Oh, yep. There's a player through here. I could challenge them, but at level one, I am weakest. I'm going to be. And if they have good gear, it could be pretty tricky. There's a portal there. It is possible that the... Zombie died to the spike traps. I'm worried it's a rogue. No rogue. All right. Any good loot? That's a slight upgrade. We'll take that. Let's open these chests and get whatever's in there. We've got the portal open. We should be safe. Wizard shoes with casting speed. Definitely a, a good upgrade there. Candies. Nice. Jack-o'-lantern is going to be really interesting what kind of loot we can get from that. I might as well take some of the uh, the white items. They'll only sell for a little bit, but that's more gold than nothing, isn't it? At this point, might as well have a full inventory. Yes, sir. Take this. Let's break these, uh, these pots. See if they have anything under them. Ring. Gold coins. And let's pick up these boots here and get out of here. That's a great first run, guys. So much good stuff already. Let's find out what level we've got off the rip here. Level two. We didn't quite hit the level three in one run. That's fine. Let's sell all our gold, not the candies. <laughs> I've made that mistake many times before. It's not a good one. Not a good feeling to, to sell your candies by mistake. Okay. Um, nice. Let's get uh, these sold as well. Since we can't use the trade channels, everything just goes to vendor, which means we will prioritize loose loot over gear in uh, most situations. Nice. 182 gold. That's really good, dude. Let's buy ourselves a new book. I guess we'll just go for a basic book since there is only two in the store. Let's make sure we check the leathersmith for any magical healing that they may be selling. Magic damage is really good and move speed is really good. This is really good gloves for, for Warlock. You want to prioritize as far as damage is concerned. The two damage stats is additional magical damage and true magical damage. Those are your priorities when looking for gear. Will and magical power do not scale anywhere near as well as additional magical damage and true magical damage. Wow, these loose trousers are very good. Move speed bonus and agility and weapon damage. It looks like we found zero magical healing in the store. And there's a shame. So we are going to buy these. And I think we might also buy ourselves these gloves as well. Yes, we've got exactly the right amount of gold for that. Perfect. Let's head straight back in and get our second run underway. Alrighty. Uh, we have spawned on one of the worst maps for getting to the cave troll quickly. And the cave troll is actually going to be out of the circle as well. So we need to make a, a huge move, a big rotation there if we want to get the, uh, the cave troll in this round. Okay, let's go straight there as quickly as we can. We might run into PvP here. People love to PvP in this tile. There is a rogue. Wow, we just one-shot that guy. Holy moly. This longsword is actually bonkers, genuinely. Level two, how do you have a purple longsword? Sword? The power of the cave troll, my friend. All right, let's bring all the goblins over here. Let's send a hellfire at this archer. Uh, 
perfect make sure that we're uh dealing with the, the 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 big swarm of goblins as safely as possible some gold as well perfect let's head on over someone just died to cave troll i'm hoping it's a warlock so i can utilize his weak healing potion that'd be really good for us we definitely need to do this cave troll as quickly as possible though we do not have much time left in this uh first circle before it starts closing on us so time is of the essence oops canceled my power sacrifice it's okay we need to get some knowledge into our build so that we can uh, bring better spell combinations and also have faster casting speeds as well which will give us more damage output over over time we should be a lot healthier on this uh cave troll attempt just because we are casting curse of pain and power sacrifice far more frequently and there should be no downtime on our magical healing then circle is now closing which means we might actually end up using our trolls blood early Trolls Blood has about a 10% uh, drop rate, so we will find plenty more this uh, this permadeath attempt. And I would rather be healthy than not healthy, as you can imagine. That should be him dying, I think. Yes. We're going to pop our Trolls Blood, make sure we're nice and healthy here. What do we get? A Strength, Will, Memory Capacity. It's not bad, but it's not great. And a Wizard Hat, which uh, is giving us knowledge and action speed. So I'll probably take it over the, uh, the Shadow Hood, which is giving us uh, weapon damage which uh, is good, don't get me wrong, but I would like to have more spell casting available to me. Oh, we got a first cloak as well. Adventurer's cloak, nice. That's the one that gives movement speed. Wow, that's really good. It doesn't have magical healing, it had physical healing. That's a bit of a shame, but that would have been amazing if I had magical healing on it. But a, a, a purple adventurer's cloak, definitely, definitely really good. Can't say no to that ever, can we? All right, let's get rid of our magical star. Okay, and did I miss anything on the floor here? If I did, I'm not going to see it in the darkness. That's fine. Let's get out of here, friends. Quick, quick, quick to the circle. Make sure we're nice and healthy. This run is definitely not going to be as valuable monetary-wise. That's okay. Not every run can be a, a god-tier run. Sometimes you hit it, sometimes you don't. Straight into the spider room. Oh, crap. This is not good, friends. Okay, looks like we're going this way instead. Yeah. Pop potion. Oh my god, the spike was there and I forgot about it. Portals just spawned all the way over there. What we might do here, friends, is play this uber safe. And just heal up a little bit. That was a really close one. Good thing we used the troll's pelt as we did. Uh, the troll's blood. Otherwise, we'd have been in a lot of trouble. We'll play this uber safe. We'll get some health back and we'll go for that uh, that portal in just a second. Because I heard that barbarian, so I don't want to risk a, a barbarian killing me, you know? Oh, shit. There's a player. All right. There's the bard, man. Barbarian is the strongest class right now. With my longsword and my uh, physical damage, I might be able to deal with him, but it would definitely be a, a, a challenge. We've currently got 80 health. And the circle is now closing. I'm going to switch my Shadow Hood out for the uh, strength and the weapon damage just in case I need to fight. There's the portal. We should be good here, I think. Okay. I wanted to try and sneak that, but I don't have the... I don't have the uh, magical interaction speed yet. That's okay, though. Get this open. But GG's, we're alive. We should be level three now. We're at level four. Nice. Really good. All right. Uh, back to the collector to sell the few loose items we were able to gain. We'll probably run the wizard hat over the shadow hood. Although two strength is a really good start, but I think two knowledge is better early on. Could be wrong about that. That's just a personal preference at that point, isn't it? Let's double check the, the merchants. They reset every 30 minutes, so we haven't had a reset yet, but... Uh, I just want to double check that I was right about there not being any magical healing available to us. Yep, no magical healing there. And here. All right. Good, good, good. We can afford ourselves a weak potion of luck. So we are going to do that this round. We're also going to get ourselves some bandages and health pots since we did get a little bit close to having a bit of an issue on the previous run. Nice. We spawned in a really interesting spawn. I feel like this spawn is really good for gold. I'm not sure if I like it for anything else. Drink the luck potion. Got min luck roll. That's unlucky. All right. 
I don't know what the best way out of this spawn room is. Let's just go this way then. Okay. Ooh, a ring of quickness. That's amazing. That's really good, dude. The secondary stat magical interaction speed is not so good, but it's definitely a good thing to have. Are you playing standing up? I sure am. Yep. We should try and get our way over to the cave troll as quickly as possible. I guess we'll take this just for the potential gold it can give us. One thing I don't like uh, about spider mummies is they actually give you zero experience. So killing them is not necessarily the best use of my time, but I guess you have to. Let's kill the Skelly Champion. Good experience and good potential gold drops as well. Damn it, why are both of these spiders here? Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. <laughs> Panic! Maybe a little bit too hasty and should try and kill this Skelly Champion. At least we have a health shrine right next to us to utilize and this is a pretty good experience room as well so even if we don't get to the cave troll in time we're still getting some good experience and some good gold as well it's not wasted time that should kill him perfect giant bat goblet that spider's coming for me oh no the spider's triggered the other spiders not ideal don't have much health, so I really don't want to get hit by anything. No, he hit me. Now I've got a poison dragonfly on me as well. Nice, the spider's dead. Right, we should get this health shrine going as quickly as possible now. We're running out of time, aren't we? Oh, it's Beater on me again. Still haven't looted this bad boy. Some good stuff here. I don't think we're going to make it to the cave troll this round, guys. That's okay, though. You, you're not going to get cave troll every round. I think I prefer my current loose leggings over those padded leggings, though. So I think we'll have to just uh, take that. Let's well open the... Uh, open this coffin here. So I think since... I don't think I'm gonna get to the, uh, the cave troll room in time. I'll just continue my PvP here. Do all these things up. Riveted gloves. Oh, magical healing riveted gloves. Amazing. Uh, we'll keep these other riveted gloves for now, though, because they are really good. And we've actually just had a portal spawn here. So once I finish killing uh, this giant spider. The bat then i'll actually take this portal and get out because i don't really want to spend too much time here knowing that i'm not going to get cave troll it just doesn't make any sense to me spell casting speed that's really good let's open the portal we'll open all the chests around us and then we'll get out of here huh i doubt you'll find a better melee weapon this run no this melee weapon is almost bis as far as uh long swords are concerned what does bis mean by the way it means best in slot it is often utilized uh hyperbolically <laughs> to mean things that are uh pretty good rather than best in slot but uh in the instance of this uh this long sword i think that it is pretty close to best in slot if not best in slot we hit level five let's go this is huge for us we've now got one magical healing and we can bring vampirism to increase our magical healing as well so that is very very big all right good gold there let's sell these things to the armorer I'm going to keep these riveted gloves just in case I get enough magical healing that makes sense. I'm going to have to get rid of these padded leggings and this long bow, uh, recurve bow because there is no utilizing the trade channels. True knowledge and spellcasting speed. I think I'll actually take this necklace a piece. It's going to give me really good PvP capabilities. And so that's really good for me. And we'll uh, vendor this ox pendant as well for a little bit of money. Right now, money is king. So whilst that is a really good ox pendant could have sold for heaps on the trade channels, we don't have uh, access to the trade channels. We won't have access to the trade channels for this uh, for this challenge. I'd rather have money now than, you know, money later, I guess. You know what I mean? I always believe I'm going to make it to, to level 20. All right, big luck potion. 
back we go. Thank you for watching episode one of the Permadeath series. In episode two, we'll continue our journey and hopefully reach level 20 by the end of it. Make sure to like and subscribe for more content. And leave a comment letting me know what you think about the Warlock changes.